Hello, it's my birthday. It's my birthday. Diva's birthday. It's my birthday. Go, Diva. It's my birthday. All right. So it's my birthday today. And, uh, you know, I found out that your birthday is the beginning of your new year. That's actually the beginning of your new year. So I am ha I am celebrating my new year. Yes, new years for me. All right, so me amigos in Argentina, hola. All right, este video is in S, is in English, is in English, este is in English, so. Pero gracias por tu amor, tu amor show. Eh, todos. All right, so, quiero hablar vos on other videos, pero ese is in English for my people in North America. Hello. All right, check this out. Um, as I said, it is my birthday today, and I am, you know, celebrating it with my little marathon videos so thank you all for joining me now i also have an announcement other than it's my birthday i uh, want to tell you all about uh my seminar going to be on 28th of february where i'm inviting you to uh sit in as i do a seminar on legal writing and traffic tickets all right legal writing actually for traffic tickets so that you know how to deal with the system as the system comes at you. So um, this is a good, it's a great seminar. We're gonna cover uh, the entire legalities of a traffic ticket. We're gonna uh, cover uh, what, a uh, current law, we're gonna cover uh, contract writing. So this is gonna be a great seminar for you. Also, I'm gonna talk about what is really going on when you're in a courtroom so and how to deal with every step and every phase of this whole ticket so that is a bonus that is a bonus now here's the deal oh yes if there is a cost it's 35 dollars you want to sign up hit me in the inbox i'll give you information on how to uh, sign up and be a part of the seminar and i like to keep my seminar small so for those of you who have signed up already thank you so much uh, let's do it. Let's get this information out and I uh, make sure you're able to share it with others. But I, um, you know, I put them in, I put this information or I create these private seminars for the simple fact that there's information that I don't care to share in the public for the simple fact that it's really um, information that people will use and abuse. And uh, I really need for those who get this information uh, or to know that those who get this information are actually have an understanding of the universal laws and are do attempting to apply the universal laws. So, all right, that is the seminar, uh, 28th of February, legal writing for traffic tickets. Legal writing for traffic tickets. Uh, go ahead and get that uh, sign in, uh, sign up for it rather. Send me an inbox, all right? Send me an email inbox so that we can uh, get you signed up. And again, those who have already signed up, thank you so much. All right, now uh, let's do this because this particular session is about, is about, words our corrupted language all right it's about our corrupted language which corrupts our spirits and people you know people often don't respect how language plays a part in a lot of the the, the things and the ills that are going on in society and that's what i'm going to talk about today um how the words have been corrupted in this, not just the not just the English language, but a lot of them uh, of the different languages and how they affect us. Now, let's first understand. Excuse me, I'm saying one of those corrupted words, and we're going to talk about that. But let's first stand that every letter, 
is a word. Every letter in the alphabet, and then some, because we've got other letters uh, that we're not aware of, like um, you know, what we think are symbols, dollar signs, cent signs. Those are those are uh, words. All of every letter is a word, and every uh, syllable, you know, like independent, understand. Every syllable in that sentence is a word. So you got these letters that make up, you know, you bring two of them together, then you get uh, a syllable. And those syllables are words. So the letter by itself is a word, then two letters together, a syllable is a compound word. And then you put those syllables together to make compound words of compounds. Okay, so it's, um, we gotta, we gotta, you know, start being cognizant of the fact that these words we're speaking, they really have many meanings. And we, we're not cognizant of that, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna learn. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some information to help you stand that there are things within you that know what these words really mean and it causes a battle within us. So I'm gonna go over that soon. Now, uh, again, we talked about syllables or form compound words. Now, let's get into how these words became corrupt. Now, when we go back to it, um, we need to understand that the ancestors spoke in positive terms. They spoke in now time. So when there were sentences, they didn't have all of these nots in it. it did, like, you know, we'll say, I'm not going to do this, and I'm not going to do that, and this is not to be done. There, there were sentences, their sentences, were, structure was not, was not set up. That's how, it's so difficult to not say not today because of how we have been trained and taught. Now, in originally, the language was more positive. It was more of a positive, positively formed term. Uh, we would say things like, I am great. I am doing well. I will succeed. I am surviving or I survive without the am, just I do. Okay, and so those that is the way the original language was created. Uh, you know, we talk about in the beginning there was the word, well, the word was all positive. Now, our ancestors, those who were in the past, past, they fully were aware of this when the language came about and how words and letters affect our very spiritual being. And that when we're using, see, this is why I was all, there weren't, there was no existing in the negative. And so when you start introducing this existing in the negative, you are corrupting the language, meaning not, you're saying not terms. So uh, we're going to understand, or excuse me, we're going to stand that and be cognizant, become cognizant of the syllables because all of the, there's so many syllables in our language that say not, and they are corrupted words, and we don't even, we're not cognizant of the fact that they're corrupted. So we'll talk about that now. Uh, one of, as I was speaking about uh, these positive terms, one of the, the more, the more, how do you say, um, the original languages uh, was Hebrew. And Hebrew, as we know, when we go and look at that, it's more of a positively written form of, of, of speech. All right, so now what happened? How did, how did the language get corrupt? Now, what we have to, what we have to, when we go back and we do our research, we'll see that um, languages were created by melanated people. You know, you melanated males, because we get this idea that, oh, the Caucasian created this, and the Caucasian created religion, and Caucasian he, he didn't create the Constitution, the religion, languages, none of that. 
That was the melanated people. Uh, the melanated woman was the original. But what ended up happening is when the Albion came on the scene, the melanated males started creating, and the, just go back and do your research, creating these languages for the purpose of keeping them off balance spiritually. Because just as we talk about, we're all gods. All of us have the ability to uh, affect the universe around us. Well, when your language is corrupted, it becomes more difficult for you to affect your language without understanding or having a being cognizant of what you're doing. So this is one of the things that has happened that you know that language was put on them purposely because it was corrupted. All these uh, not words put in into the the word compound words that we're using, and then what ended up happening by uh, decree of universal law, th those Albions turned around and used that same language against the melanated people that taught it to them. So we're going to go through this and understand uh, and be cognizant, become cognizant of some of these words we're using and, and see how I am really battling trying to uh, make sure that I use the correct words and the, and the proper terms uh, because they, they, we, our, the language is so, so tripped up with all of these negative words that it's going to be difficult for all of us um, you know, to, to learn to pull these words out of our vocabulary. Now, let's go into this. Now, when we look at this, letters are words, as we spoke about. Now, words, when you put these words together, they cast spells. All right, so this is why, you know, when we're writing these letters down and we're creating words we are spelling when you put this on paper you are actually spelling that's why they call it spell or spelling it's not a coincidence because every time you're writing every time you're speaking you are spelling and the the reason why this is important is because whenever you're speaking these not words or these these negative terms and you're, the, you're, these things are coming out of your mouth, you're spelling against yourself. And a lot of times, listen, we don't even understand, or excuse me, I'm using that word, we're not cognizant of the fact that we're spelling against ourselves with the very words that we're speaking. Again, the English language is known as the language of Babel for a reason. It is tripped up with all types of uh, terms that throw you off spiritually. Um, now, again, spells create sentences, all right? So when, once you've done spelling, you spell out all of these words, then you got a sentence, as in a prison sentence, a sentence where you have spelled on somebody and you have given it a time frame. See, this is, this is how important it is to know what words we're speaking and what we're actually saying. Because every time we speak, we're spelling. And because this language is so backwards and so tripped up with these negative terms, it becomes us spelling against ourselves and giving ourselves sentences and not understanding it. So once you have that sentence, it ends with a period. So it's just like a period of time you're in prison you know, you have that period at the end of the sentence. These are not happenstance terms that are used for what we're doing when we're speaking and spelling. If we can start to, to, to re, uh, let me see, be cognizant of this, when we can start to be cognizant of this, then we can learn to stop spelling on ourselves. We're not even doing it intentionally. But it's being done because we're not cognizant of the words that we're speaking. So let me, th this is another term that we're not familiar with. Like we'll say, you'll say a jail cell, a jail cell versus a vessel, like this vessel that we're in. These vessels are considered jail cells. 
cells for the spirit. All right. So what, one of the things we have to keep in mind is are these words that we're using and how really as we start to um, get more involved in etymology, we're going to see all types of clues pop out right in front of our face. All types of information is just going to start falling out of the woodworks as we start getting into uh, being cognizant of the words that we speak and just breaking all of these syllables down. Now, uh, I'm going to speak on a few of them today, and I hope you get an understanding, a good understanding, excuse me, I hope you become cognizant <laughs> of what I'm saying, because again, I'm still battling trying to you know, pull these words out of my vocabulary. It's, it's difficult. So, but we'll work through it and eventually we're gonna have to create our own dictionary. Now, one of the things I, I need to go over is who we are as beings. Because once we understand who we are, or once we're cognizant of who we are as beings, then we can start to, uh, once again, pull these words out of our vocabulary and, and be cognizant of why it's important to pull certain words out of our vocabulary. Now, we are spirits that reside in these vessels. Now, as I've spoken about before, we have been here before. This is not any of our first times being here. When you look at a child, a child is really an old spirit returning in a new vessel. Okay, we always were and we always will be. Now, why that is important is because when we're speaking these terms, our spirits are fully aware of what we are saying. They know the language, the, the, the spirits know the original language. So when I talk about Hebrew and Arabic and all of that, our spirits know. Our spirits are aware of the letters. And eventually they will start to reveal that to all of us, what these what the letters mean exactly, as we're starting to understand what these syllables mean. I'm, I'm gonna go over in a few minutes, but our spirit knows. So when we say things that go against what our spirit knows, see, you gotta understand what we call, what I'm saying is our spirit is what they call our subconscious. I don't like the term subconscious because it means below conscious. There's nothing below about the spirit, nothing. The spirit really is the one that's conscious. And then they call the brain the conscious. But the brain don't have a damn clue. It's just talking. It's just this is the masculine and this is the feminine. So the, the spirit knows. And this, what we think is the subconscious, I'm going to call it uh, the conscious rather, I'm going to call it the brain, is clueless because the brain has been programmed by society and telling you to believe something that is not true. And we're going to break down uh, some of the things that we are be like You know, it's become a religion to us. And we are refusing to see what's really going on with these, these uh, terms. So now I need, I need to make that clear. Our spirits know. So let me give you an example. Uh, one of the examples is the term, uh, I use this, this example a lot, the term uh, that we use, aboriginal, all right? Now, um, aboriginal supposedly means original people, supposedly. But now let's understand what, uh, once again, we're going to break, every, a syllable is a word. And so we can start learning to break down these words ourselves by using our mind. So. When we look at the term ab, let's think about some terms that come, that use the word ab and what those words mean when you put ab in front of it. Okay, let's like abnormal. When you take abnormal, so normal means something that's regular, something that is you know common, normal, all right? So when you put ab in front of normal, abnormal means not normal. Okay, so that, that's, one, that's one way to start understanding what these prefixes mean because they, you know, we're not really clear. Once you start to 
to, to, to be cognizant of what the prefixes mean. You start to become uh, cognizant of, 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 of how to, to move these negative words out of, your, out of your vocabulary. Okay, so abnormal means not normal, all right? Absent, all right? Sent, you can look up the, the term you want to find is C-E-N-T. Right, sent means a fraction of or part of something. You know, uh, like a, a, a cent of, of, of a penny is a fraction of or part of a dollar. All right, so when the person is absent, they are not a part of. They are absent. They sent, they're part of. They're absent, they're not a part of. And so what we're understanding is the term ab means not. Now you can look it up um, in etymology, it's going to say it means far from. That's fine. Far from means not close to. It means not. And so even though it's, you know, let's 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 take this for example, because again, what we are used to doing is we believe what is in the dictionary. Okay, the problem with that is we're not understanding that dictionaries are copyrighted and they are controlled by the same people who want to keep you enslaved spiritually and mentally. So you've got to understand or, or be cognizant of the fact that every time you're, you know, when you're looking in the dictionary, uh, these words that you're finding are not necessarily not necessarily uh, the true meaning of what the word is. All right, so, and I'm gonna break down, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna break down what the term dictionary means. But let me get back on this so that we, we are cognizant of the fact that our spirits know. Now, going back to Aboriginal, you've come to the understanding that ab means not. You've come to, you're cognizant of the fact that ab means not, all right? And you can see this even if the dictionary is saying, no, it means far from it. You see, you gotta remember, use your own brain. Dictionary might say, oh, no, it means far from, but wait a minute, when I use it in this word, abnormal, it means not normal. When I use it in this word, absent, it means not sent. So ab means not, that is a clue for you. That's just two, you can use as many as you want, but once you got two of them, you under, you, you, can, you can be cognizant of the fact that it means not. Regardless of what the dictionary is telling you, you're seeing how it's being used in the language. All right, so now, you gotta remember that your spirit knows. So your spirit, while you're going, oh, uh, I'm aboriginal. Your spirit is down here going, ab means not. But your, your brain is up here, no, nah, no. Nah. The, the dictionary say, the dictionary say it means, it means original. Well, how is it original if it says aboriginal? It's, it means not original. And this is one of the things when your spirit is fighting with your so-called conscience, you got a battle going on within you. That, that becomes a problem. This is how, I'm just giving you an example of how the language has been corrupted. And this is how spiritually we continue to fight with ourselves. So you got a fight going on within you. Oh, you're going to have a fight going on outside of you. Now, one of, the, one of the things I want to go over is how a lot of these words are no words, all right? Again, I spoke about this. You know, the dictionary will say one thing, and the what you know for yourself and what you can see for yourself will be uh, another thing. The problem is that this becomes an oxymoron, and it is or it, it isn't. It either is or it isn't. And if this is, if you got an oxymoron, like when you go and take ab, and you see for yourself when you're placing it in front of other words that it means not, that's what it is. 
You can take your own word for it. You don't have to trust what the dictionary says because you got to remember this is a book that is copyrighted, copyrighted and purposely used. You, there, there's dictionaries, so many dictionaries, thousands of dictionaries, and they're all copyrighted and they're all purposely created to keep you off balance mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Again, when you're battling on the inside and we're using these terms, we have, we have to become cognizant. We have to become cognizant that we are fighting our own spirit. I mean, there's so many words that we use. Even, again, when you're putting these letters together, every letter has a specific meaning. Every letter is a word. And when you're putting them together, you know, you're, you're creating a sound, a tone. And those tones have a vibration, and vibrations affect our spirits. Okay, and so let's, you know, again, as I've told you what uh, the purpose of a dictionary is to keep you off balance, let's even go so far real quick and break down what dictionary means. Dictionary means. All right, so die means to. All right? term dic diction as you find the, the that two letter word die means two then you're going to find dict means a thing said something said all right shun means offspring like an offspring of something airy comes from the word air which is which means a a i r e which means air in spanish but it also means tone tone so two things said that spring off or offspring to form a tone so when we're talking about two that means it's more than one it's, it's, it's you know more than one term and if you got more than one term you know to form a word this is when you start again you start telling lies because in the original language what you had one word that meant one thing but then you got these languages that were starting to be formed and they had different meanings or dual meanings this is when you start telling lies this is when you start going against your spirit when you got words that mean more than one thing and and now you've got to guess and there's ambiguity all right dictionary two meaning creating ambiguity things said that spring off of these terms to form a tone and remember uh every word every syllable is a uh it has a vibration a tone and if those vibrations are out of sync, those tones are going to cause, cause imbalance with our spirit. We got, we got to start becoming cognizant of this. Now, um, again, those are words uh, with uh, words with two meanings. They're oxymorons, or different meanings. They're oxymorons, and so you have to become cognizant of what the word actually means by using your own brain. You can't go to a dictionary and think the dictionary is going to tell you the truth about what's really going on because it's there it's meant to lie to you if you want to come out of this uh this funk that we're in this fighting that we're constantly going through outside of ourselves you've got to become cognizant of these terms and start uh, building on your etymology all right so now uh let me say this too and then i'm going to go into some more words i'm going to break these down and then we're going to uh i'm going to close this out but one of the things that we're not aware of is that um you know they have to tell us they those who we think are in power those who are running the television stations and the movie companies and all of that they have to tell us what they're doing before they do it what they're going to do to to us before they do it and and they do this through movies and you know they they'll put it in the paper yeah hey, we're going to do uh, blast your sky with um, chemtrails, and we don't need, we don't ever look at it. We don't look in the paper to see. Wait a minute, you know they they blasted the sky. They tell you, 
And so that is part of the magic because really whatever they do, they have, they have to do it with consent. Well, we give consent by not saying anything. And when you did, when you when you decide to register for my contract law class, which is coming up on the 28th of February, I'm going to show you about how this agreement comes about. Now, um, one of, let me give you an example, uh, you know, of how they show us what they're doing to us. I'm I'm not a Star Trek fan by any means. That is not my show. But I want to tell you about this character called Data that's on Star Trek. Now the thing about Data, Data has a twin, an evil twin. Now the difference between Data and his evil twin is that Data was programmed, Data is a clone by the way, he, he and his brother, they're clones. And they were made, they were created and programmed or droid, they're droids, they're not clones, but they're droids. And they were created, one, Data was created with his language was um, he doesn't use negative terms. There's no negative term. Everything, as I said, his the language is pure. He cannot speak in negativity, no nots and no this and that and that. Whereas his twin brother, he's, he can use all the not words and the don't and the can't and the won't and the will nots. And the difference between those two is that the twin, the twin brother is evil. David, David's twin brother is evil, and that has to do with the fact that his language set has been corrupted. He has a corrupted language set. And so, again, now we just think of this as entertainment and all, but that's just one. I mean, it's where it's telling you when once your language becomes corrupt, then your spirit becomes corrupt, and it corrupts you. And when you corrupt the whole society's language, You've corrupted the society. And so we're not we're not cognizant of this. And this is one of the things I want to bring forth. I hope uh, you find this information well. But I want to, you know, I want to go over one. Uh, for example, that we, you know, we are <laughs> one of the examples that is used in dictionaries that we are so clueless about. Uh, that we use all the time. Now, let's take the suffix ist. The suffix ist. Now, the suffix ist deals with to be greatly concerned with something or to have a great love for something. That's what ist means. So if you're a violinist, you love the violin. If you are a, a pianist, you love the piano. You're greatly concerned with the piano. If you are an optometrist, you love eyeballs, okay? So this is the term ist. But now we got this term racist. Racist. And it's defined in the dictionary as to hate somebody of the other race, to not like somebody of the other race. Now, every other word in the English language that uses the term or the suffix is, it has to do with love. And with this term, racist, it has to do with hate. All right, I need, I need you to think about the term, and I would ask somebody, but I'm not looking at my uh, my notes now. But I need someone to just think about the term that you use to this to deal with the fact that you love the people of your own race. What is the term for that? the The term for someone who loves their own race. What is the term for that? Someone who loves their own family. What is the term for that? We don't have we we have had this term redefined for us racist, which really, really the term racist means someone who loves their own race. But you go and look in a dictionary, and you're gonna see that it says no, it means hate. Well, here's the problem. Remember, I said your spirit knows, your spirit has been here. So now you got melanated people talking about <laughs> no, nah, I'm not racist. I, uh, black people can't even be racist. We can't be racist. That ain't what we do. And then your 
your spirit is like, what do you mean? We Races mean to love your own people. That's what it means. To love your own race. But the, you gotta, nah, we don't, I ain't racist. I, I, no, I don't, I, I don't, basically you say, I don't love my own people. That's what you're saying when you use that term. And so now you got a battle with the spirit and you got a battle going on up here with your brain that is clueless because it's been programmed to think that racist means something that it doesn't. And you see this in the news and you see people using this term or hear people using this term every day, racist, he racist, he racist. He, in a negative way, you should be racist. I mean, you should love your love your own people. So the problem is that we have got to become cognizant of these terms. I'm gonna go over a couple of these, a couple of more, and then I'm gonna get out of here because I've done. Um, you know, again, we have a lot of no terms. All right, so. Let's go, let's do con. All right, con means it's a negative. It means against, all right? Um, you know, we know it when we use it in the term con man. We know it when we use it in the term contact. But we want to use it in contract. What is a track? That means a, a book or a treaty, treatise, meaning, you know, like a contract. But con means not or against so it's against your book so when we're using this term contract again we're not recognize or we're not recognizing we're not cognizant of the fact that it's meaning no book no treatise all right d let's look at d as a matter of fact i want to look at n what is n anything that has i n is a not word i i n means uh it has many meanings, but you'll you you look and dig deep enough, even in your um, etymology book, it's going to tell you it means not. So watch this. We'll say let's 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 look at some words that have in in it. Um, invisible. All right. If it's if it's visible, you can see it. If it's invisible, that means you cannot see it. So this is a clue, once again, that tells you what in means. In means not. Uh, inoperable. You can operate. That means you can do surgery on it. Inoperable means you cannot do surgery. So then, again, once again, that's two words right there telling you in means not. So you know what in means? Not by your own mental thinking and understanding how to break down syllables. Um, independent, all right? If it's dependent, which we're gonna break that word down right after this, but if it's dependent, that means it doesn't need help. It stands on it, or actually it does need help. If it's dependent, it needs help. It stands on its own. So, so we're told that's what dependent means. We're going to break that term down too. But if it's independent, that means it's not dependent. It, it does not need help. It's independent. I'm an independent woman. All right. Does not need help. Now, but then we take the term intelligent. <laughs> intelligent. What does that really mean? Because you, I'm intelligent, and your spirit is going. You are okay. Let's break down what intelligent means. All right, tell, T E L L means knowledge, or to think. Gently is to think in a gentle way, as opposed to being um, arrogant. So this is this is like you know saying intelligent. As opposed to being, you know, arrogant. All right. Now, in supposedly means intelligent. Supposedly means that be, being knowledgeable without arrogance. All right. But why do you need the end? Because in means not. That we just we just went through that. What does in mean? Inoperable, invisible, independent. It means not. 
So now you go and stick the word in in front of intelligence, which means intelligent means knowledge to know or to think. Gent means gently or without arrogance. So now you put in in front of it. It means you're not intelligent with arrogance. It really means you're an arrogant jerk. And your spirit, once again, knows this, what you're saying about yourself. You are spelling on yourself when you put this term in, in front of intelligent. But you don't know that because the dictionary is telling you, no, it means to have knowledge. In. But your spirit knows. And so we've got to learn, uh, again, to break these words down so that we're not spelling ourselves. Now, let me go over real quick D. Uh, as in D-E. And, and then I'm going to get out of here. But D-E means away from. All right. All right. So when, when we look at words, when we look at words, uh, D-E, for example, uh, destruct. No, destruct means to build something. And then destruct means not to not build. So when I struck it, I'm erecting it. I'm lifting it up. When I destruct it, I'm breaking it down. That means not. All right. D, okay, dependent. I talked about pendant. Now, pin means to hang on to something. Pin, to hang on. D, see, this is another one of those terms. D means to not. Hang on. So if it's, it's pending or it's, it's, it's hanging on, then it's not hanging on. So that's why I was talking about the term independent. We're being told that dependent means um, um, that it's holding on to something. It means, you know, to hold on to something. That's what de dependent means. But really, when you look at the term D, it means not hold on. Again, these compound, these letters that are formed to make these compound words, D, pen. Again, pen meaning to hang on to something, D meaning not to hang on. So that means that um, dependent actually means um, not hanging on to something. It's the opposite. It's the opposite of what we're being told it is. Once again, your spirit knows. And once we get into breaking these words down, it's going to become clear of how much we've been spelling on ourselves. All right, let me go over just real quick um, a couple of other not syllables that we use in our words all the time. I went over dis, D-I-S. You can look that up. X, E, X is another no term that we use all the time. I spoke about D, that's a, another term meaning no or not. Re, meaning no or not. Un, meaning no or not, which is a negative. Ab, meaning no or not. In, meaning no or not. So when you see these words,